Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about thread scheduling. How the threads are scheduled and how contention scope is maintained while thread scheduling and p-thread scheduling we will also discuss. Operating systems support both user level and kernel level threads. It is the user level threads that is supported and scheduled by the operating system and are allowable to the user processes. The user threads are managed by the thread library and the kernel are not supported with them. But to actually run on CPU, the user level thread ultimately must be mapped to an associated kernel level thread. This mapping is indirect and may be available done on the LWPs. Now we will see that how contention scope is addressed in the thread scheduling. One distinction between the user level thread and kernel level thread lies that how they are scheduled. All the kernel level threads are scheduled by the operating system and that run on a particular server. Now the user level threads that are run and managed by the thread library and run in the user spaces. While the thread library schedules the user level threads to run on any available LWPs, this procedure is known as process contention scope or PCS. It is actually not running on the CPU, but only giving an illusion that is creating a schedule of the process to get run on the available LWPs. Here the competition for the CPU cycle is among the threads that belongs to the same process. Now while actually the operating system schedules the kernel to run on a physical CPU. Now which kernel should be run on an execute CPU should be decided by a system contention scope or SCS. Competition for the CPUs in the SCS are among all the threads in the system. Now some operating system such Windows and Linux can do the scheduling only in an SCS order not in a PCS order. Now when an important issue is that the PCS is done only in priority basis, that the scheduler will select a runnable thread from the high priority to run. Now any thread that is on the high priority queue should be scheduled first between the low priority queue. This user level thread priorities are set by the programmer and not adjusted by the thread libraries. Now some thread library allow the programmer to change the user level thread queue priority. Now then the priority can be changed and the starvation can be avoided by aging. It is important to note that PCS will simply preempt a running thread to in favor of the high priority thread. However, there is no guarantee of time slicing with the priority of among equality. Next, we will discuss about the P thread scheduling. Next, we will discuss about the P thread scheduling. Here, we will highlight that how a P thread or POSIX API is scheduling among the PCS and SCS specifying while creating the thread. Here, two functions are mentioned over here for specifying the thread. One is the p thread scope process, which is used for scheduling the process using the PCS, and another is the PCS p thread scope system, which is used for scheduling along with the SCS algorithm. On systems implementing the many to many model, the p thread system process is used where the user thread is scheduled on any available LWPs and the number of LWPs are maintained by some scheduler activation policy. Now in the P thread scope system, it will schedule again the system priorities and the kernel level threads using the many to many model, but actually implementing the one to one policies. 
Now there are two functions for setting and getting the attributes of the p threads. The scopes are, can be set and get by these values. We will see that how are the syntax of these functions. Now using this pthread editor set scope function, we can passing the parameter of the set of attributes of the process and along with the value of pthread scope process or the pthread scope system, that is the scope values directly as an integer value to the function. In this way, the scope can be set by the process. Now another process is used to get the scope of a process. In this get scope function, we are passing the parameter again the set of attributes a pointer to that process's attributes. And here we are passing a pointer to an integer value which is set to the current value of the scope of the process. In this way, we can get the process scope and use it in the pthread scheduling. If an error occurs in any of this function, it will return a non-zero value. Now we will see with the help of an example in a pthread scheduling that how to get a scope of the current scope of a process and set the process scope system to the process and again evolving five different threads to concurrently running on that system. Now some system only provide this pthread scope system process SCS handling. These are the examples of the Windows, Linux, Mac OS X. Here inside the main function, first we are declaring an integer variable scope. Next we are declaring the TID of five different threads. And next we are declaring an attribute that is the set of processes attributes. By using this pthread attr init function, we can get the default attributes of the processes by passing a pointer to the attr of this process. So first we are using this init function to get the default attributes of the processes. Now here, first we are getting the current scope of the process to know and change the scope of the process. So by using the getScope function and passing the pointers to the set of attributes as well as the scope variable, we can get the current scope.
Now, if the scope is equals to the process or PCS, that is a P-thread scope process, now we need to change it. Now we are changing the scope to the p-thread scope system here. Now if the scope is already in a system or SCS, then we do not need to change it. We can remit it with the p-thread scope system. Now we are creating the threads of five numbers including this for loop. Now we are using this pthread create function and we are passing the parameters of the set of attributes and the TID of each of the processes and the number or runner function that where the separate thread begins execution and no other specification. Now it can join the all threaded so the parent thread must wait for the child thread to finish its execution. So as we have said that we can put the p thread join function inside the for loop. In this way, the main function is consuming first the scope of the current process and then it is setting the scope to the process scope system and then creating five threads to complete their execution. In this way, pthread POSIX standards can help in thread scheduling. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.